It's nice to see you. I hope you had a good week. This year is dedicated to the Ilur Nishmas Rechaleya Bas Rav Chaim Tzvi. As always, it should be an Aliyah for Neshama. What we're going to be talking about today is Chinuch for Purim, which is such a delightful topic. You know, it's so much better than Chinuch against anger or lying or whatever. It's so positive. So again, we'll start as always by talking about what's appropriate for the youngest age group. So Purim is so easy for, to deal with with little kids. They love Purim. So um, I'm talking about children from three until six, seven. So when I say young children, children below three, if they just have a good time and eat and have the general idea that something nice is happening and get the name, the names right, you know, Hama and Mordechai, that's you're way ahead of the game. But with kids in three and older, the main message you want to get across to them is that we have great people, Mordechai, Esther, great people who get the Jews to go back to Hashem and then Hashem saves us from the bad people, from Haman, from Achashverosh. We have to listen to the good people. We have to be there and do what they want us to do. Okay, and then... Hashem will save us. And He saves us because He loves us. And that's why we should show that we, we love each other, also we give each other shalach manas, and we give matanos le'evyonim, and we have a big simcha, a, a party, eating, because we're so happy, and we want to show Hashem that we're happy with Him that He made us happy. And... Of course, there's Megillah where we tell the story. Those are the main ideas. So you'll notice that there are four main ideas, and um, none of them are hard to get across. This is a, the storyline of Purim is one that's so delightful, the children love. So the archetypical um, Gan Purim, yeah, where they have some sort of a play, or at least a masquerade, all of the boys want to be Mordechai. All of the girls want to be Esther Hamalka in Gan. Nobody wants to be Haman. Nobody wants to be a Barbie. It's easy. This is, um, this is a holiday that's easy on little kids. So I'm going to then now move straight to the negative, where not to take them. And then we'll talk about, how again, how to get them into what we do want them to have. Don't take them to, let's see if our Shalach Manas will be better than everybody else's Shalach Manas. Don't go there. Don't take them to, ach, another Meshulach at the door, I can't believe it. Don't let them hear that. You could think it. You're allowed to think it. Don't say it. It's bad for the kids. Okay, don't let them come to Megillah reading unless you're absolutely sure they're going to sit through it. Don't do this. Tell them there will be a reading, switch off with another woman so she could hear when you're watching the kids, you could hear when she's watching the kids. Um, ask your husband to lay in for you. Find an Eitzah. But don't take young children to Megillah reading unless you're sure they're going to sit through it. And of course your children will. Don't they always sit quietly for three quarters of an hour? Or for a half hour? Or if you have, um, you know, like the Megillah reading out of, reader out of Mars for 25 minutes, it's not going to be less than that. So be realistic. Remember, the kids have no obligation to hear Megillah, and the adults do. I've been to I've been to places where parents, in the name of Chinuch, which to them means letting the children do do Haman with the Grager, they think that this is Chinuch for Purim. Let their kids come, their little kids, and the adults aren't Yotze Megillah. And it's bad enough that, they're, that the adults who know that they're not Yotze have to hear it again. But they're the ones who either don't know or are not that careful, who surely are not Yotze, because they can't possibly hear everything. So be careful on that. Be careful on if the Suda ends up being long and somewhat frightening for kids, if Abba and his friends are drunk from exposing them to too much, you have to have a plan about what you're going to do with the kids if the house gets too crazy. So this could include asking a, a, a friend or a neighbor before Purim, not on Purim, somebody who lives nearby, whether it be okay if you drop in with the kids in the late afternoon if things get crazy by you. 
Um, this could include asking an older teenage babysitter to take the kids someplace. Let's go again if you're in a firm area to a main area where there'll be a lot of people in costume, where it'll be interesting them for to look at what's going on. If it's too crazy by you, try to figure out something that if it's too crazy, the kids don't get scared. Purim is not meant to be scary. Okay, so now let's go back into the things that you do want to get across. So the heroes of the Megillah are, of course, Hashem and Mordechai and Esther. So when you tell the Megillah story, that has to be the focus. So the hidden hand of Hashem, but you can tell even very little kids, the Megillah story as follows. The Jews were all in Paras, that's 